So, Ironclad number seven. How do we do today? Remove a card, random potions, curse for choose a rare, or the starting relic for the boss swap. We are fighting Hexaghost. Good, I was looking for an excuse to boss swap here. I might do that. Ever thought of going, uh, playing, I'm having a revenge day and going back to previous seeds that I lost. I don't like replaying Slay the Spire seeds too, too much. Uh, a, a very small difference in decisions can have sort of reverberating impacts on a run, such that uh, you end up with a completely different run sometimes very quickly. Just uh, taking a different path, for example, can mean seeing different card rewards or seeing different um, events, maybe? <clears throat> or events, uh, different events in future acts at minimum. And that can really change how the, the run plays out. So I think I'm going to go boss swap here. And the reasons for this are as follows. One, I'm starting to like ironclad boss swap into Hexago specifically. Because you need less health in Act 1 to deal with this boss. And then by the time you get into Act 2, you'll have two boss relics. Um, and the other reason is that this, pa this Act 1 is flexible. We can dive headlong into challenge if we wish here. And tackle a couple of elites, including the Burning Elite. Uh, or we don't have to fight any elites at all. Um, actually, wait. Uh, no, that's not true. We have to fight this elite, this elite, this elite, this elite, this one, or this one. But only have to fight one. And we can delay until after the treasure chest for the first elite if we really need to. So here's our sort of panic out route. All this to say, I think this is a better than normal boss swap situation. I would prefer maybe a random rare relic or 250 gold as an option. I would probably take choose a rare for a different downside here. 99 gold or 7 max health, but not for a curse. So I'm going to boss swap here. This loses the burning blood and gives us a random boss relic. This has a small chance to go pretty badly for us. Um, but on average, I think makes your run quite a bit stronger. We end up with ectoplasm, which is not uh, anyone's favorite boss relic, I don't think. But is perfectly fine here. It's going to give us 4 energy. It's a boss relic that does not have a front-loaded downside. But it does have a downside. But it's not a front-loaded downside. That's important. We're only going to lose all of the gold that we would gain from this point. So as of floor one, we're up one energy and down exactly nothing. Which means that our short term is going to look really good. And we're already very well favored to get out of Act 1. So don't worry here. Making up for all of the money in the entire run is an extra boss relic, and quite frankly, that's probably a pretty good trade. Let me catch up with chat here for a moment. <clears throat> How's it going, Erroneous? Is it typical to have a, to abuse some sort of mechanic on each character for consistency at higher ascension? For Clad, it seems like you have to abuse exhaust or you have no chance. I think Ironclad in particular is about abusing something. Kind of is the whole character is it finds something broken and break it. Um, it doesn't have to be exhaust. We've seen lots of successful runs piggyback off of feed, scaling your max health, uh, often combined with a card like Reaper to gain the health back. Um, you can also break the game with Snekoi. That's going to be something you abuse. But yeah, you're, you're pretty much always kind of breaking the game, at least on Clad. Silent and especially Watcher feel like they can win games of incremental advantage a lot more reliably. In fact, I'd say very specifically for Watcher, you don't have to abuse or break the game. You just have to use your strong um, base output and combine that with Watcher's consistency tools to have a small, refined, solid enough deck of cards. And Silent can do something very similar with a footwork, a Noxious Fumes, and a Caltrop, so you can just carefully chip down every enemy, but never really overwhelmingly kill anything. Would I change Ectoplasm in any way? I would change Ectoplasm, I think, to say, 
<clears throat> you no longer gain gold from combat rewards. That way you could still gain gold from relics that give you gold um, and events that give you gold, which is kind of the real bummer about Ectoplasm is that a decent chunk of the events in the game and a small portion of the relics in the game no longer do anything because they interact with gold. Confused. I know you hate Ecto as a boss reward, but I seem happy to have it here. Yeah, because um, because I, I think it's perfectly winnable here. And Ironclad does have a lot of uses for more energy. And my chief concern at, the, at uh, every Ironclad Act 1 is getting out of that Act 1. So I'm, I'm pretty okay with Ecto as a swap. It's, it's definitely not my favorite, but I like it more than, I think, Cursed Key. And I like it more than... Busted Crown, for sure. Good luck on the exam, Infrared Eclipse. But how much my, would my win rate improve if I allowed myself to save Scum? Quite a bit. At least 10%, I think. But probably... Potentially a little bit more than that. There's all sorts of shenanigans we could pull. For example, I could save Scum to get the optimal line through each combat. Assuming I'm trying to abuse this as much as possible. Um, we're going to get favorable outcomes from events all the time, so I can get whatever I want from matching keep, no consequence. I always win the bet in Act 2. Um, what else does Save and Quit work on? Not a whole lot else, actually, in terms of events. Um, but anytime we have to do like a 50-50 in terms of predicting what an enemy is going to do on the following turn, you know, playing a strike versus defend, can you be greedy in this fight, can you not be greedy, Save Scum can answer all of those and allow you to take whatever the better line is each time. The Face Trader, that's another one. But if, if I'm only retaking when I would die in a fight, then it's going to be a much smaller percentage. It's, it might change some uh, heart combats or maybe like unlucky Repto fights or Gremlin, Gremlin Leader fights especially. Um, collector fights too. But by and large, most of, the, uh, most of the other deaths wouldn't be preventable in that case. But it would still be a solid couple percentage points for sure. Anyway, I'm going to talk about this run that we're on right now. Do I ever go this side? That's a pretty reasonable way to go. I'd rather take out the Burning Elite if possible. And with four energy and an upgrade, I bet we can. Okay, yeah, let's start uh, hereabouts. I like four combats, four... Um, four chances at a potion, four hard rewards, all good stuff. Lousy. I think in most fights we'll expect to lose not too many hit points, as having four energy allows Ironclad to have consistently higher output with uh, with his hands. Here, for example, we do get to kill them both. Without the burning blood, I'm a little hesitant, a little bit hesitant to take a Hemokinesis, which trades two health each time we play it. I think I'd rather have a headbutt here. Yeah, being able to recur our first two-cost card, whatever that might be, could make a big difference, too. First event of the run is a money shrine. Of course it is. You ignore the shrine. But we don't want to take too many events this run. Not a great opening hand. Please draw defend next turn. Thank you. Bummer. All right, we're getting clipped in the opening combats due to our draws here. Nothing we can do about it. It just happens sometimes. He's a shame. There's a good two-cost card. Uppercut. Great headbutt target, too. Perfect early add when you've got four energy.
And T-Star, thanks for the Prime sub. Saying this sub goes out to this run. Good luck. Thanks. Here we go. Uppercut doing some actual work. Also the draw order doing some actual work. Good for us. Let's try to take zero on the jawworm fight. So far, so good. Let's give me a kill next turn and everything's fine. Just need one more attack. Although there's only two draws. Good. We can do bash, uppercut. All right. So we got hit by the other fights, but jawworm went perfectly. That's not how it usually goes. Still no potion, unfortunately. Does make the upcoming fights a little scary. A Twin Strike, a Shrug, or a Heavy Blade. Given that we have four energy, I really like adding a little bit of block to the deck. And a little bit of card draw to the deck. It's a good headbutt target. It works well with headbutt, because you can headbutt something, then shrug into it. I like it. Let's take that Shrug. Should make the next uh, combat a little bit easier. Definitely going to take a couple more combats here. Our ambition is to take that Burning Elite, but we're going to need potions for it. At least one. At least one good one. Defend Bash, I assume? Yeah, it's got to be. Hitting for 12. Keep the Vuln going. Looks like we want to try to split it next turn with our damage, so let's just double defend here. We hit it as hard as we can with four energy. Not hard enough. There's four slimed in the draw pile. Do I want to headbutt anything? I could headbutt defend even. How much health will they have? To commit. Um, we do 18, 31. So they'll only have 11 health. Maybe seems better to headbutt a strike then. Two strikes kills one. I'm okay with this outcome. Ultimately, we get through our hard pool fight with only three damage taken. Berserk Clash Flex. Also, we still didn't get a potion. Spooky. Um, if I don't get a potion from this combat, I might have to bail out of the Burning Elite. We'll see. Aaron W. says, In general, is decision-making in reward screens more important than in-combat decision-making? No. No, they are both very important. And uh, messing up either will tank your run very quickly. I don't spend as much time talking about the in-combat decisions usually, but they are very important. But I think they're the sort of the two halves of the Spire game that you have to put together to be capable at it. You have to be able to, to know which cards to play in which order, and you need to be able to know which cards to take. And you need to know who, which enemy to target if there's more than one. That's also a sort of knowledge check. I think we're skipping those. We are definitely upgrading our uppercut here for one more week in Vuln. That will make either a Lagavulin or Grumlinob fight a lot more manageable. If only we get a potion. Please send me a potion. Let's see if I uppercut a headbutt, we'll deal 13 plus 13. That will kill you. I can strike the cultist and uppercut will be on top. That's perfect. Don't want to waste my energy playing defense here. At least it feels like a waste. And that should cleanly kill. Four energy rocks in Act 1. These harder fights are no problem. Get a Sneko Oil. Finally a potion. That's certainly good enough. And perhaps Flame Barrier is also good enough. Hey there, Jofer. Grants on beating the A19 heart. Well done. Yeah, I really like Flame Barrier as a headbutt target. We're fighting Hexaghost later. 
That's also pretty good with the Snack Oil. Josh Man, thanks for the Prime sub in the nine months of support. Okay, I think we usually win this Burning Elite fight. We're quite good against Legavulin. We're just fine against Sentries. Knob is probably our worst matchup, but hopefully the Snack Oil makes that easier. As we can Snack Oil to draw Bash or Uppercut turn one or something like that. Lagavulin with extra Metella size. I'm not afraid of this. This is not bad. This will be a fight where the Uppercut and the Flame Barrier put in tremendous work together. And I really like Bash Uppercut as an open, although I don't like this hand very much. Maybe just Bash? Probably just Bash. Okay, headbutting the Shrug is just fine. We may or may not use the Snickle Whale during this fight. I haven't decided yet. Next turn I can ba uh, Flame Barrier Bash. That's kind of cool. Might want to push damage in this fight. Uh, I, I think over defending is going to be a losing recipe here. So let's trade... Of course, here we do want to play the Flame Barrier. Flame Barrier Bash, for sure. Some Flame Barrier damage. We're going to get debuffed in a moment. That's not the draw. Is this the Snack Oil moment? I think it might be. Yeah, I think this is the time. This fight's about to get a lot harder, and we're only halfway through. Let's do it. Excellent. We got one cost uppercut, zero cost headbutt, zero cost flame barrier. Good. Very good. Some other stuff is high cost, but then this this is more than makes up for it. Uh, I think I want to headbutt the flame barrier. Although I could headbutt. Uh, uppercut and do Shrug Uppercut again. It's kind of fun. A lot more damage, too, actually. Let's do that. Yeah, it's better than playing one of these stinky strikes. Punch. Okay, we can't kill with Bash Strike Strike, can we? That's going to mean taking 12 here, unfortunately. Should wait? No, we can. It's perfect lethal. Easy game. Okay, that went really well. Thank you, Snack Oil, for bailing us out. Get a very stinky relic, the Bottled Flame. Quite sad, but I guess I'll take it. We can bottle our uh, Uppercut, if nothing else. And then Gremlin Knob's pretty easy with Bottled Uppercut. That's also really good for Hexaghost for the turn two week. Yeah, that's just fine. I'd prefer a uh, quote-unquote real relic, but it'll do. It will give us consistency, I guess. And here's hopefully a, quote, real relic. Oh. <laughs> Welcome back. There's three or four runs now with this thing's crazy early. It is certainly a real relic. Helix or Pyramid Streak continues. Love it. All right, well, that should make things somewhat easier moving forward. Uh, especially if we get a good boss relic, this is going to turn juicy. Twenty streak of getting one specific rare relic. I mean, it could happen. I, I wouldn't be overly surprised if that is how a Spire Records ends up getting um, made at some point. Is one player with an extraordinary streak of just really good starts. Flame Barrier is so good. Ooh, and the uh, good times keep coming. Next 
next turn could be weird, though. We've got the shrug, and we can headbutt defend to make it a guaranteed full block. Let's do that. We should be out of here. One strike, one uppercut. Or three strikes, one more strike. Three strikes, one more strike. Cool. We only took two damage to sentries. We pick up Nunchaku. Gain one energy for every ten attacks played. Between the Ectoplasm and the Nunchaku, we have pretty good energy generation so far. And I was going to say that we probably want a non-energy boss relic. Because I have nothing to spend all this energy on. But now I do. Whirlwind. Whirlwind is really nice the more energy you have. And I think with four base energy, potentially five energy, five energy plus next act, Whirlwind is amazing here. It's true that we can never get Chemical X, but that's not that big of a deal when the Whirlwind will just blap everything anyway. Yeah, being able to take out birds is pretty sweet. There's definitely some other utilities as well. This is interesting. Um, if I uppercut strike strike, can I kill that louse? I'm pretty sure I can. And then we're just fighting the Jawworm. One on one with four energy. That should go well. You take nine. Nine, you're dead. Four energy and some. I would like... Uppercut, I guess. Set up uh, Pendant as much as, or uh, Nunchaku rather, as much as possible there. Do we try to get to a store node to spend our money before it gets stolen? Yeah, we might as well go here, right? Actually, yeah. Instead of an event, then we can remove a card or something. Although it would be nice to know if we're getting a Pandora's box. It's about 50 50 that we encounter the two thieves early in Act 2, and yes, they'll take money from us. So it's probably better to just go to this, so we get a guaranteed remove or something. Seems quite reasonable. Praise the Helix! Praise it. Definitely gonna upgrade that Whirlwind, now it's 32 damage, played on full energy to all enemies. Which is a lot. In that one, I guess. Good job, Buffer. JHTM, thanks for 41 months. That is a lot of months. There we go, a real potion. And a disarm going into Hexaghost. You better believe I'll take disarm causing the enemy to lose two strength permanently. All right, shop. What you got? On sale uh, rare card? On sale Dark Embrace. And there was Chemical X too. Dark Embrace, you say? Well, I am a certified Dark Embrace enjoyer. Big time. And I could even afford to shrug it off alongside if I want a bonus shrug. JHTM, thanks for gifting us up to Storm of the Seas. Welcome back to the Cozy Sub Club, Storm. Could also buy a potion. I've got two potions, though. What do we need a strength potion for? You afraid of Hexaghost? I'm not. I'm not even a little bit afraid of Hexaghost. We have four energy. We'll do just fine. Look at that shrug. Yeah, and a flame barrier. Um, do we upgrade flame barrier or disarm is my question. Caramel Corn, thanks for the prime sub. Do I ever do silent runs? Used to play rotating where we change characters every win, but now I'm looking for the individual character streaks. Um, so I'm playing one character at a time. We'll be focusing on silence after Ironclad. Um, which will happen either after I achieve my goal or sometime around April if I decide to move on. 
Phenomenon, thanks for the gifted sub as well. Barrier is relevant in a lot more fights than disarm. I agree, which is why I like the upgrade on that. The potential bonus damage is nice too. But I shouldn't need more than minus two in this fight, I don't think. More for the uh, next act fights. Hello? All of my cards? No? Okay. Not today, apparently. Not today. Getting multi attack next turn. Just headbutt uppercut, then I can do uppercut, disarm, flame barrier. That would mean skipping bash. But I can play Dark Embrace that way. Let's do that. Think about Nunchaku here. Okay. We're actually going to be a little behind on damage here. It's all right. Do have the energy potion to go with Whirlwind or something else? We can also just survive the Inferno pretty easily. Gotta be careful though. This is a good time to deal 24 with this energy pot. I'm gonna do it. We have weak for Inferno and minus two strength, so we should never die to that. Good to get the burns out of the way here. It's still a pretty bad turn overall. Hmm. It's only three by six. Oh yeah, worst possible hand. We're not dead though, even with the worst possible hand. Yikes. Janet, thanks for the four years. You have been here for year, four years and years. You sure have. If we lost a Hexagos because of draw order, we certainly we could have with a few less hit points here. Classic uh, speed pot. Doing what it does best. Nothing. And I believe we have a kill in this hand, right? Yeah, we're out of here. Whew. Definitely a spookier Hexagos fight than anticipated, as we're one turn slow there, but uh, we made it through. And we have two potions. And we can have a bludgeon, a berserk, or a limit break. I guess that's a pretty good bludgeon. Just do more. You don't have any strength to limit break with. I definitely don't want a berserk. Yeah, let's take a bludgeon, I guess. This is not the rare card we wanted here. Would prefer a demon form or a corruption. Definitely a corruption. Or an offering would be fine. Or barricade is actually pretty decent with these cards. But when we get a Sneko in a second... Nah. We don't get a Sneko. We do, however, get the awesome thing to counteract Ectoplasm, which is Pandora's Box here. Pandora's Box says, upon pickup, transform all your strike and defense, which is, I think, the weak point of Ectoplasm. With no money, we can afford no card removes, and that usually means you're stuck with the strikes and defense doing uh, not much. But if you transform them into something else, well... It's pretty likely to work out, and I've won quite a few Ecto plus Pandora's box runs, so I'm quite happy to see this thing here. What do you got for me? That said, this could go badly. We're not guaranteed to get good cards. We could get triple Wild Strike, triple Clash, and we could cry, but uh, probably not. No, we don't. We get uh, we do get Berserk though, for all the Berserk lovers. We also get Shrug It Off, Ghostly Armor, Sentinel. Pretty good block overall. We did get four block cards. Brutality is iffy. Carnage is fine. 
Seversoul is actually secretly awesome here. Um, don't love the other stuff, but we don't have to play these cards. That said, removing these cards is not likely to happen. So, I hope we can make good use of them. What an act layout, huh? Hmm. I don't know if I can handle this path. It's the path I want to take. Seems crazy, though. Can you only get orange pellets from the shop? That is correct. It's a shop relic. So it will only appear in shops. The idea of doing something like this. Don't really want to go to shops that we know will be completely wasted nodes. So I'd rather just take more combats. Although I'm a little worried that our health will get whittled down. Can we actually survive? These five floors, I'm not sure. We should be quite good at the fights of Act 2 with this Whirlwind, with our premium block options, but will the draw orders line up for that to work out? I don't know. I don't know. Far left is more reasonable slightly. We get a fire before the Elite, so we can rest if we have to. But there is one wasted node. That part's not so great. There's also no three elite line. I'm going to trust in Helix here. Yeah. That's already looking pretty good. Is Buffer gone if we get attacked for zero? No, it's not, thankfully. No, it is not. Do I dare play Berserk here? I think I do dare. I'm going to dare. Back down to 21. <laughs> All right, tw 21. Oh, yeah, that was super reasonable there. Get the obliterated nerd. Bash Bludgeon. So I can just hard cast that. Battle Trance. Here we go. Card draw. You'll love to see it. Red Mask Gang incoming. Uh, they'd have to show up here. I hope so, actually. Spirit Guardian. No thieves for us. Definitely going to Berserk here. I could do Bludgeon Uppercuts. That's kind of badass. Or Sever Soul if I want to do two more damage but not remove artifact. Whatevs. You just buffer this hit. Which again lets me play the brutality. Seems fine to me. We draw seven on this turn. So I can headbutt, bludgeon, shrug it off, play bludgeon. Squish. Okay, so far the fights of Act 2 not so bad. We get a regen potion for a bit of healing here. And if we want, we can take a body slam plus, which is kind of awesome. So I will take it. Especially with our Dark Embrace, that could be very abusable. Here I was bad-mouthing this Berserk. Yeah, it's done wonders for us. Genuinely. Here it is again doing wonders for us. How long can I survive in this fight? Let's find out. Nice draw. Okay. That's not what I wanted. Dang. Uh, I guess we're playing Hemokinesis on one of them. It's better to do that than to just buffer a hit from them. That did not go well. Oh well, at least we got the regen potion. 
They got punished by the Berserk there. This turn looks fine. I do want to make sure we get the rest of the regeneration here. Or as much of it as we can. I don't know if we can block 19 here. No. Okay, that's not too bad. With the Dark Embrace especially, I will take another Disarm here. Very good against Book of Stabbing, too. Although I worry a little bit about our Bronze Automaton fight eventually coming up. Bird nerd, huh? The Dark Embrace, I think we kill the Cultist first here. How dare you. Might hurt. 31! Great. Just what my day needed. Get smashed in the face. Alright, well, this elite is starting to look a little bit scarier. Who saw that coming? Now draw some cards. Okay, and then a much more reasonable number, six by two. Why are you like this, Chosen? Why has it got to be this way? Okay, as long as we can avoid excessive... Interesting. Bloodletting plus... I don't think I have enough health to do that. Or enough card draw to want it. It's fun, though. Uh, third disarm, also, I think, too much with uh, some of the fights upcoming. It's not that helpful. I think I owe the chat a dad joke. That sounds very likely. Sounds very likely. Did you hear about the Ironclad who started up a casino where you gamble on blood sports? It's the world's first foray into blood betting. No refunds, not even if you liked it. So we're taking six here, whether we like it or not. Whether we like it or not. Yeah, three disarms looking a little bit better now, but that's how it is. Once again, our draw order not that cooperative. Two six ain't too bad so far. If we can make that all of it, then we're good. Yeah, we're good. Just get on out of there. We got a block potion, so in a way, we healed six from that fight if you squint really, really hard. Do I want another unupgraded uppercut? Not exactly. I don't think so. So with 32 health and two potions, do we face the first elite? I'd say we're in reasonable shape here. I would have preferred closer to 50 health, but uh, I think we almost always win this fight. And it is indeed Book of Stabbing first. Because of course it is. My buffer... I guess I could attack pot. I'm also going to get an energy I can't use here. Annoying. 
The only attack that actually blocks is Iron Wave, and that would be kind of a mediocre attack pot anyway. And yeah, if we're not if we're not uh, block potting, we should use the brutality here. We could use the block potion to save the buffer. Might only get us an extra seven or so health next turn. But if we could save it for the turn three big attack, that would be preferred. I think we just let it go. And headbutt um, Shrug. Shrug or Uppercut? Now let's headbutt Uppercut. Make sure that this thing stays weak. Playing Hemo, I don't think is worth it. Well, actually it might be. It does give us a wound, though. That wound could be bad. But dealing 22 more up front does seem really good in this fight, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Disarm Flame Barrier. Next turn we can block just fine. I'll play the uppercut this way. I'm okay with that, though. You could argue that we can Berserk here. I think that's actually reasonable. Because I can use the extra damage next turn will be accounted for by playing one more block. We don't take any extra damage this turn. And then we don't draw the um, Berserk again. I think that's worth it. Although 33 is a big number. That's right, you're also not weakened. We do get a heck of a body slam. Go disarm sentinel body slam. That seems most reasonable here. Although I don't like not playing Dark Embrace very much. Yeah, we full block. No prob. And we have five energy. Your attacks are much less scary now. Can I make you die? Let's see. 22... 24. I think Iron Wave Body Slam is more than 12, right? We would do 7 plus 7. It goes to 39. And we deal not quite enough. So we have to attack Potion to kill if we want to kill here. Or we can Block Pot. Do I think I'm taking this elite on? Probably not, but I would like the attack potion over a block potion for this elite, so let's block potion. Let's block potion here. Which I believe gives us the kill immediately, courtesy of uh, Body Slam. That's kind of cool. How's it going, Cener? Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Ninja Relic's cute. I do kind of like Reckless Charge with the Dark Embrace, but only a little bit. Only a little bit. This might give us the edge we need to beat um, Bronze Automaton here, which could be quite nice. I don't think I'm taking this. Though it is nice with the... And Chaku as well. It means we're really optimistic about our draw order. I don't like that so much. Not feeling it. Get out of here, you stinky merchant man. What are you doing with all these tempting offers? Be gone. Don't yawn at me. So let's go upgrade. Open the chest. Probably rest. As far as upgrades go, I really like upgrading the Dark Embrace to make it more affordable. Upgrading Bludgeon for plus 10, probably worth it too. Let's upgrade Dark Embrace. Berserk a curious option, too? Is it ever Berserk upgrade? Yeah, it might be. Certainly a lot more playable. Quite happy with the uh, boat thingy here. And I I like this elite a lot more if I rest, so let's do that. Having health for Bronze Automaton is not a bad idea either. I want a couple of events. Let's do it. First up, the snack.
Seems pretty good. As far as fights go. Get no money and a burning pack plus, which is excellent card draw. Can also exhaust our sentinel or other cards that we don't want to see. Helps make our body slam far more effective. This is a great card. Really love to see that with a free upgrade. You know what? I will take another fight, actually. I want more card rewards. That's what I've learned. I want card rewards. Be vulnerable forever. It's fine. Probably. Maybe. This hand is not fine. That hand is very bad. Hmm. No way to fix that either. I guess we could play the Dark Embrace and the Disarm, but it's going to be tough. Can't apply Vuln this turn either. I failed to do so on turn one. That's a little iffy of a choice. It does seem like it just has to be Bludgeon Body Slam. Whirlwind for Nenshaku here. It sure can. Take no damage this turn, but next turn... A bit more questionable. Oh, but I can headbutt a uh, card before I... Play disarm, right? We can headbutt uh, Flame Barrier. Or Burning Pact, but preferably Flame Barrier. Minimize the damage here. This is actually free as well. Okay, we full block this turn. We'll play Brutality, we get one more draw next turn, and we don't draw the Brutality again. It's like plus two draws in a sense. And then we can uppercut bludgeon. We're out of here. That was a very smooth fight, actually. We get a block potion. And three cards that could have been good, but aren't. Let's just take the elite. Don't think we take any of these without an upgrade. Maybe an Infernal Blade Plus. That line brought to you by the Dark Embrace upgrade. That's right. Worked out there. All right. Gremlin Leader. Yeah, this is not what you want to see on turn one of this fight. Not an easy way to dispatch the minions. That means we're going to drink the attack pot right now. And I'm perfectly happy with Carnage here. It does damage. 20 clean. What's the way to do this? I get them both? to be Carnage on the little one, Bash Uppercut on the angry one. I can't play Disarm here. Otherwise, I don't actually see a way to kill them both. Red Lap, thanks for the Prime sub and the 20 months of support. What did our Pandora's box contain? Here's the list. Nothing too, too powerful. Um, Berserk, Brutality... A bunch of stuff. Would an uppercut iron wave kill the 22? No, that's only 13 plus 7. That's only 20 damage. Do we ever not touch one? That would be inviting an attack next turn, which I don't really love, but there is a possibility that that works out. This is where the save and quit. We talked about earlier. This is where save and quit could make a huge difference. Not that we're going to do that. I'm going to kill these gremlins now. We get a point of strength, at least. And if we do get attacked, we have buffer. Actually, it would have been pretty good to get attacked. As we drew the whirlwind and all of our good block on this turn. That's not great. Guess I'll put Berserk in play. Here's hoping. Keep uh, Ghostly Armor around. It also adds damage to our Body Slam. 
Can't draw more. Don't want a brutality as we still have buffer down. Okay, good. We didn't get attacked by the leader this turn. That's the important bit. Hmm. Once again, next turn looks like hot garbage. Since I better shrug. Can sever soul sentinel. There we go. Dark embrace. Sever soul. Um, and I think I'm going to headbutt rather than playing Carnage here, because I want the Carnage to exhaust and give me a draw one. Next turn, the wizard won't be charged. We're most afraid of Gremlin Leader attacking us. So probably we take Flame Bearer. That's the top card. Flame Barrier looks good. Could attack, thankfully. Okay. Just hedging our bets. Can I go sufficiently ham on Grum Leader here? I think I can. Play Sever Soul, draw a ton of cards. Um, does this just kill next turn? I'm pretty sure this just kills next turn, right? This will be 48. More than that, actually. That's already a kill with just the bludgeon. Yeah, we win. Cool. Very cool fight. Get me out of here. Here it comes. Bonk. Ornamental fan is sweet. Further encouraging us to spam attack cards. These cards are not so sweet. Um, I think we should just keep looking at more combats. We have plenty of health. We're doing well in fights, and there are more combo pieces we'd like to find. So I think right now the best bet is to just keep looking at more cards. Surely that will work. Play the Berserk. Bin to win. Bludgeon to win. Buffer to win. Buffer the hemokinesis is kind of cool. Mediocrity. Yeah, so far Buffer, uh, the Berserk rather, has impressed me. I'm considering upgrading this Berserk as our next upgrade because it has been so consistently useful to have the one additional energy each turn. And it will make it much easier to put in play, especially with the Helix. So yeah, let's upgrade Berserk, I guess. I really don't like the anger there. Without any proper strength scaling, I don't think I like it much. Our goal in this fight is to preserve buffer until the hyper beam. We can hopefully do that with a block potion, but we'll see. Secondary goal, of course, get Dark Embrace and play and do some stuff with it. A little bit more block. No block, huh? So let's. Uh, I'm gonna skill potion first here. There we go. Actually, maybe better to headbutt a block card and take the burning pact. Hmm. Oh, yeah, two by eight is. I don't know why I miscalculated that. For some reason, I thought we were too short here. No, we're not too short. 
Well, then I can definitely take Burning Pact. I'll do it. Try to do this without bludgeon. Dark Embrace is here. Remove the last artifact. That seems good. The front one is going to steal our Berserk. The second one will steal an uncommon card. Kind of funny. Oh, we get the Berserk in hand, actually. This will be a good turn to play Berserk. As the Automaton is not attacking us. Or only one of the nerds is attacking us. Perfect. Simply perfect. Maybe you wanted to headbutt for more scaling? Disarm. They both have disarm. Okay. So this will be the hardest turn to block, of course. Forty incoming. No, wait. Twenty-four plus sixteen. Yes, forty. I think we do it without any help here, thanks to Body Slam letting us kill one. Be thirty-two, right? Twenty-four plus eight. Yes. We just shrug into Body Slam. Unfortunately, Body Slam's not quite enough to get this one, but we can kill this one. And then we're perfectly blocking. And now we have Buffer for Hyper Beam. Now we are good. Let's do Iron Wave, Whirlwind, because I want to point his strength. Cut you. Now we can play Brutality. Just want to draw into something I'm not going to play here. Uppercut, headbutt, body slam, whirlwind, I guess. Buddy, shrug it off for next turn. Should be pretty easy from here. With the disarms, it's kind of like it's uh, behind by a turn in the fight. Whereas we're ahead with the extra energy here. We're also drawing basically the same cards every turn now, so there's pretty much nothing that can go wrong. Famous last words. All right, we're out of here. GG. Yeah, that was a great fight. Pretty much perfect execution. I used the skill potion preemptively, but the burning pack helped quite a bit, so no complaints there. And we have two potions still. And we have either an impervious, a fiend fire, or a feed. That's actually a hard choice. Hmm. Impervious helps with our late game block. Lots of block all at once. Good with dark embrace. Good if we find corruption. Fiend Fire exhausts a bunch of cards in hand. That's kind of nice with Dark Embrace. Does a bunch of damage all at once, but burns the deck down. I'm not sure we have a deck to spare for Fiend Fire. Feed could scale our max health by letting us kill enemies with a feed. Dark Embrace should allow finding the feed for lethal most of the time. And although we're pretty late in the run, feed could still be 40 max health easy, even without an upgrade. So I do like the feed quite a bit. Maybe more than I like the impervious. I'm going to take feed. 
I think we can do it. As for boss relics, I'm not sure what we want here. We do have some... Pretty good power already. If we want more card draw, Runic Cube is really interesting with our brutality. Because that would allow us to draw even more cards. Coffee Dripper is a little bit spooky because we don't have healing at all. And so to give up the ability to rest means we really have to do this with no heals whatsoever. Philosopher's Stone, a little bit less scary with Fossilized Helix. Definitely a bit less scary with two Disarms. Could still end up being relevant, but uh, most of the downside is negated by what we have. And this deck certainly would appreciate more energy. So you know what? I like the Philosopher's Stone over the Coffee Dripper. Not often I'm saying that. Let's, let's try it. This could backfire on us. Really, really hoping it won't. I could take quite a few elites in Act 4. Lots of elites is not a bad idea. So we would like to get some more relics. How are we against various elites? Nemesis could be a real problem. The others don't seem so bad. Although Giant Head we might struggle to kill in time. It would be nice if we had some proper scaling. This is currently what I'm thinking. I'm going to get one, two, three, four relics. I don't know if we can actually handle that, but we want to try it for sure. We can get off at basically any time, too. So let's start that way. First up, we have to get past the Dorklings. Stinky Dorklings. I uh, want a Berserk. Sure do. Good. Battle Trance, please. Darth Malaku, thanks for the Prime sub in the 15 months. Much love. Can block 28, but 28 won't cut it here. at least. Until we lose our buffer. One times five. And I get an energy back. Dark Embrace is the next card. Sounds like I want to do the nine by five. By attack pot, we can probably feed here. Unfortunately, Whirlwind, Feed won't kill. 45. Uh, 56. This has 58. 9 by 5 is 45. 45 plus 11 is 56. Yeah, let's use the attack pot here. All this here. The good late game power. I would love to find basically anything that adds statuses. I should have taken that reckless charge. I'm going to grab this because I think Evolve is so good in the late game. Also helps us a lot against um, Nemesis, who could be a real problem. We have a Sever Soul too. Um, it also helps in this fight, which I'm going to fight. Fight these two nerds for a rare relic, although they are quite a tough fight. So don't underestimate them. I mean it. Don't mess with these two. We're, we're absolutely going to play feed here for 15 damage. Lest disaster occur. This is definitely getting played. Unless you're telling me Whirlwind kills. No, that's only 60, right? 12 times 5? That's never killing.
the shape we didn't draw the evolve yet. You're not going to be Vol next turn. That is kind of spooky. Sounds like I'd better play the Whirlwind then. It's a good time for our block potion. Although, better time is when we have Body Slam in hand. Let's take some damage. Health is easy to come by, right? Son of a gun. This is fine, though. We can do Bludgeon, Iron Wave, Flame Barrier. That's fine. Take six more. Not worth playing the potion. Oops, wait. There we go. One more, then we should be done. Okay, definitely a tough fight. I'm not 100% sure this will end up being worth it. But relics are relics. We get calipers. Calipers could be good here. Start of our turn, lose 15 block rather than all of it. That could be the beginning of something, anyway. Especially if we can find an entrench, perhaps. Let's take at least one event here. Into fall, losing Hemokinesis, Evolve, or Ghostly. See you later, Hemokinesis. That's a good remove. And now for Single Orb Walker. You've already fought your bigger friend. Could be a free fight, this one. Hopefully we can feed on it. I actually remembered that I have feed. Good for me. Um, maybe not the right choice. Foolish. I miscounted there. Um, just give me the burning pack then, I guess. Let's draw back to it. Easy enough. Cool. Blessing of the Forge, that could be an upgrade to our max health. I do like True Grit somewhat with the Darker Brace. Is that enough? I'm not really convinced that is enough. It's going to be hard to want to upgrade that, but... Yes, I really need a second wind or something. I don't think I'm going to take this. Let's take one more event, which is the Merchant. That's not good. Should be taking more fights here. Hmm. Hopefully we don't fall apart in the late game here. It certainly could happen. Decent enough turn one in this fight. We even got enough block to retain some. Buffer saves us here. No problem. No problem. Actually, we full block. Even better. We just need Evolve and the Disarms. So there they are. Destroy it all. We're one feel no pain or one second of wind away from really good things happening. Ooh. 
Losing my buffer to this? Terrible. It's definitely not good. Could use our block potion here. I don't really want to. Body slam would give energy. We don't play the body slam. Wait, uh, we can just full block, actually. We have sentinel. Missed the sentinel. Yeah, we're fine. We're not losing buffer at all. Everything is fine. Which is good, because I sure need this buffer right now. Hello? Sir? Sir, you're causing a scene. Okay, we can play Bash here if we want to. Vitality gives us a much better chance of feeding next turn. Uvu Doll give us plus one strength. Yield no pain plus. Okay, here we go. Here we go. We have a thing. There's also, um, was that a rupture plus? That's also kind of good with the brutality and all that. But the feel no pain plus is what will give us hopefully the late game advantage here between the calipers and the body slab. Having a whole bunch of extra block is going to be a big deal. Yeah, I wouldn't call GG yet. Uh, there's definitely still things that could go awry in this run. We've got uh, Reptomancer to survive still. But the odds are looking good. Good enough that I might want to rest now. Rather than upgrading any of these cards. I would like to do that. Just gonna safety rest. We have the Blessing of the Forge if we need anything upgraded short term. First up, it's Giant Head. Cool. Dark Embrace, Berserk, Evolve. But any of this, might as well headbutt the uppercut. I'll let Carnage go here. Obtain some block. That seems fine. Keeping buffer, I guess that's all that matters for the moment. I want to play three attacks. Can I do that? Only if I play feed, so... Either we get rid of feed... This is probably a good fight to let feed go, actually. We shouldn't be too greedy here. So yeah, let's play the feed. Just get rid of it. Sivir Soul. Now I can play Uppercut, Whirlwind, Body Slam, Speed Trance. No second Body Slam, but that's alright. 
in a little bit. We still have buffer here. We're doing just fine. Here we lose buffer, I believe. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Okay, that is fine. Through Giant Head with no damage, no potions used. We get a bag of marbles to apply vulnerable turn one. We get three bad attacks, unfortunately. But the deck is just fine at the moment. Jamat, thanks for the 25 months of support. Thank you, thank you. Gotta take the blue key over the Orichalcum here, although I do kind of enjoy Orichalcum in a situation like this. Got a Nemesis rematch. This time we lose buffer quickly. Unless I block pot. I think we're okay in this fight. They do have 70% potion chance, huh? Hmm. Particularly worth. It's all good. Might as well play this. This would be not very bad, actually, to play this too. Alright, time to deal some damage. Possibly also accumulate some block. The calipers seems like a reasonable choice, actually. Pretty good. It's time to deal damage. Much as we can. I have stats on win percent after finding feed. I don't think that I do. Ooh, wow. Thinking our Iron Wave is actually doing a, quite a bit of work right now. That said, third disarm is also very good. I'm going to take third disarm in this situation. Burner is also very nice. Uh, three disarms is partially crucial to making first cycle of heart nice and smooth. If we early draw any disarm, then we can remove the strength from heart and ensure that fossilized helix is preserved for the big hits. And nib to double the damage of an attack is quite welcome. And Winding Halls offers us Madnesses, which I don't actually wait. Infinite? Sometimes. I'm going to take those. We could maybe do a Shrug Madness thing as a win con. Can definitely be powerful. The idea is you make two zero cost shrug it off, and then greatness ensues. You also have to exhaust all the other cards in the deck, but this deck can do that relatively easily. Zero cost carnage. Because I need help. Now what? Now I think it's buffer time.
Though... What if it wasn't? What if it totally wasn't? It'd be nine? We can block that. Easy berserk every time. Next turn is uh, Incense Burner. He's headbutt. I guess the Zero Cost Shrug. And Nib is also ready. Bonk. Although I'm not actually full blocking unless I do this. Deck is awesome. I get mango fruit juice. Hello. 19 max health and a second win. Okay. Well, thank you for all of those things. That's really good. I like that. We juice in now. This Forge Pot might be actually very important, so I'm going to discard the other one. I'd like to have Forge Pot into Heart with this deck. We have too many unupgraded cards, where a small amount of upgrade could make a big difference. I have to recall here, unfortunately. Is there any reason not to drink this? I don't think so. Let's just use it now. I don't think so. Nice attack, nerd. We're drawing cards. Good. Pretty sure that's good. That's good. No statuses here. Impervious would definitely be nice. We did skip it, Impervious. We did skip it, Impervious. Uh, I'd also like Incense Burner on a slightly higher number for Time Eater. That would also be nice. That said, this enemy does ramp up their damage pretty dang fast, so... Can't exactly mess around here. Yeah, that says it's feeding time. Second Dark Embrace or a Pummel Strike plus. Another good madness target. Feels to me like we want the second Dark Embrace. Just draw all of the cards forever. Should be a good time. Wish we didn't have to recall here. But we do. Alright, first up is Tim Eater. We have lots of disarms to make Time Eater less spooky. Question is, do we just get bonkered on turn one, though? 
Get full blocked by second winding both dark embraces. Don't think that's a good idea. That doesn't seem very smart. But if upgraded Dark Embrace was draw two, it would be even stupider as a card. Do we regen potion here? I don't think so. I think if we're going to regen potion, it should be in the next boss fight. After seeing how much we lose in this one, I don't think we ever lose 68 health at time eater. Especially not if I get double Dark Embrace down turn one. Even if I do have to then take six, which is fine. Let's just do that. Let's just take six, lose the buffer. I have double Dark Embrace. Make me regret losing Silver Soul. Carnage is free. That's pretty good. I can do Ghostly Armor, Body Slam, Madness. And then play whatever's made free. We've got a free shrug. Can't play this feel no pain, that's fine. I should have played Whirlwind, is what I should have played for one strength. This is good though. We get Berserk down for free, we get all of our disarms down. I'm gonna put Feel No Pain in play here. And we're intangible next turn for this attack coming our way, so that's no problem either. Nice attack, nerd. They vulnerable. wouldn't be good here. Poor Calipers. It's trying its best, but not working out so well. Slimes would be more than welcome, actually, so please give me slimes. Wind again. Now we shrug first at, at minimum here. And body slam. Now we second wind. Body slam. Shrug. Body slam. Actually, wait, I want to eat you. Uh, don't body slam. Instead, the carnage. Now we can feed. And with a bonus of plus one on the incense burner to boot. Okay, so probably we get to keep this regen potion till next act. It's not like we're gonna buy a new one at the shop, right? So we'd, we'd rather use this in act four if we can. Which might let me upgrade something. In this fight, the primary thing we need to remember is that we have to end with the Incense Burner on four to make the Shield and Spear fight much less terrifying. Wow, I can force Madness on Shrug here. I like that. Yeah, the Incense Burner setup is quite important, indeed. And I think I need to weaken the Awakened one to keep our buffer this turn. Yeah, we do. No, don't play that. Play this. Play this. Make the shrug free. There we go. Make sure these bird nerds die. We can eat one of them as well. Evolve and Berserk are, are going to go away because they make the Awakened One very angry. not wish to make our boss angry. Oh. 
and nib the iron wave for maximum pow power. Eleven by four, except... Is it, though? I'm afraid of this fight. This is a good blessing of the forge moment. But like I said, I want this potion for heart. So I'd really prefer not to. Um, how am I doing this turn? We start by disarming twice. Being what we draw. Okay, that's whatever. It hurt a bit. Just feel no pain, but I don't think this is the right turn for feel no pain. But I guess I'll take 15. 15 is fine. Then we can eat you next turn. All are intangible. Of course. There's not much reason not to play that. I guess not. Although I don't have to play it now. I was kind of planning on using Second Wind here. Yeah, let's do that. Should get rid of Second Wind. Eat this fool. Setting up our pen nib could be helpful for the upcoming elite fight as well, but I don't think it's going to be as important. Scaling going. One strength per turn is enough for this fight. It's not enough for heart, not even close, but it's definitely enough for this fight. next turn. Got rid of all the powers, I assume, but we can build up some block. It's not too bad. If I'm offered Bias Cog and Deep Fragment after the first battle, which would I take? I would take Bias Cognition every time. The card is just obscene. It's so much more focus, so much more quickly. Sure, you're losing one focus per turn, but in most fights, you can end the fight before that catches up to you. Oops. So that's usually my go-to strategy. Bang. Okay, now we gotta be careful. Watch the incense burner, watch the pendib. We want burner on four when we kill. Not this turn, but next turn. Shrug loop. That way we can kill with body slam with no consequence.
GG. Okay, I think we have very good odds into Act 4 here. Got 118 max health. Quite a good array of relics. Two thump, two thump, two thump. A deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of this evil? You deal 2352. Have I been here before? Why are we so poor? Well, we're so poor because we haven't earned a dollar our entire life. That's why. Missing 16 hit points. If we see an upgrade that matters, that's what the Blessing of the Forge is for. I'm going to keep both of these potions into the end game here. Can elites be harder than hearts sometimes? Definitely. Yeah, especially the elites that are right before the heart can absolutely be more tough than the heart for certain decks. I find Defect struggles to these two the most. Uh, their turn two is exceptionally deadly, but the Incense Burner makes things a lot safer if you set it up correctly. Of course, sometimes the shield attacks you on turn one, which is no bueno. So I'm getting, get, going to get rid of Berserk here. I don't want to play it now, that's for sure. Oh, God. Maybe I did. <laughs> hmm. Classic. Huh. All right, I'll just... End up the Whirlwind? We take 14 here. Which means I can use the regen potion. Yeah, but my face, though. Thankfully, we're immune to damage next turn. We don't want to use the regen this turn, because it would heal us at the end of the turn when we're still at full health. We want to use it next turn. Turning around does not help. Turning around makes this worse, actually. Yeah, I want to headbutt Burning Pact. And I think we want to try to kill Spire Shield first. Though that does sound difficult. The Sentinel this turn. Hmm. Excellent. This arm. Next turn looks bad. Shoot. Second wind at least gives us block for next turn. Let's take that. Definitely worried we're getting smacked here, though. Certainly looks like it. Yeah, that's good. We block this hit in its entirety. We do take some damage, not too much. Get a lot of extra draws. I've had worse. Killing the shield first might have been optimistic. Well, your second wind at least. Get rid of three cards. Okay, looking a little better. Surely we do lots of damage this turn, right? In fact, we can go Uppercut, Body Slam. It's not quite what I wanted. Uh, let's Battle Trance, Sever Soul, Feed. Okay, that's better. How hard do I want to gamble here?
Hmm. So my question is, what turn do we want Incense Burner to be on? You'd think normally three or four. However, our circumstances mean that might not be necessary. We have Helix to block the first big hit. And we have three Disarms that we're very likely to draw by at least turn two. If we play a Disarm with a Forge Pot, we bring the multi-attack down to zero, guaranteeing we can buffer the big hit. That, to me, says we want Incense, then, to be on turn five of the hard fight, the first attack of the second cycle. So setting it to zero or one on purpose. Would plan on breaking the helix. Uh, we have boat thing though. We have ten block for free on turn one. There are lines where we lose the buffer and completely break. Like if all three disarms are on the bottom, for example. That could go badly. It's actually more of a pain to set up Burner to the quote-unquote wrong number here. Turn three burner is pretty good, actually. Because if it's multi-hit first, then we burner the big hit. And if it's big hit first, then we buffer the big hit, burner the multi-hit. Although that is most likely to result in burner being completely wasted. I think I set it to one. That's my nomination. Can I block for enough to actually do that? Great question. No. All right, four it is. <laughs> that answers that question. We're out of here. Good discussion. Any strength scaling? Yeah, oh well, I guess we'll just have turn two burner. That's probably fine. Good old Grumlin Horn. Good old Grumlin Horn. But yeah, this this draw. This draw means the heart does nothing. I don't want to upgrade in this deck. Potentially the madness is. Evolve. I want to upgrade Evolve. Calipers are okay here. With minus one strength and weaken. Is it going to be one by 15 or zero by 15? Should be one by 15 if we're, if we're vuln, actually. Yeah, it'll be one by 15. So we have to upgrade this disarm. If we want the multi-hit to be zero. Because it'll be one times 0.75 times 1.5, which is more than one. Let's do it. No need to play Whirlwind. Keep three block. Right, multi-hit first. So we do waste Burner. This was definitely not the right number for Burner. Food for thought. We have buffer for this. Uh, hmm. And my choices are or second wind. 
guess I don't hate losing these cards. I'm gonna do it. Dark Embrace, go! Could have been Body Slam first. It's all good though. We do buffer this very nasty hit. I think that's perfectly fine. Gonna headbutt the Shrug Plus for next turn. Can maybe Madness Flame Barrier next turn? That's not bad. I'd like to retain some block. Having the Madnesses in separate hands actually seems better. I get to keep three, though. I'm a little worried we're not fast enough. Like, feel no pain, uppercut, disarm. Go from there. It's a pretty good time to play Madness, right? Flame Barrier is the ideal hit. I'm okay if I hit Dark Embrace, I think. Lucked out. Okay, that's going to be a huge game changer for the rest of this fight. I'm also going to play this feed. Get rid of that. Thank you. Um, don't play both. Just the body slam. Make not that much. Going to disarm you now. First, headbot flame barrier. Draw the free flame barrier. I could make zero cost ghostly armor. I think I'm just going to let the ghostly armor go. Intangible on the next attack turn. Okay, this is working out. We've gotten rid of Bludgeon there, I think. Play this. Block. Another turn to build up block. It's the multi-hit, too. Alright, surely Madness now is correct. We hit any of these three cards, everything is good. The Shrug Minus is perfectly fine. And now what? Second wind? Uppercut second wind? And then we have only the remaining super cards. Make sure to play Body Slam first. I think we're there. Give me Flame Barrier, Shrug, Flame Barrier. Take 18 by 15 return damage. Please and thank you. Actually, wait. Make it... Uh, 24 by 15. Actually, wait. Make it 30 by 15. <laughs> Get toasted. And 
And then one... Actually, I can't body slam now. We just have to ass turn, so to speak. GG, Mr. Hart. What a run. From the Ecto start to the Ecto finish. GG. GG. Mark the streak at seven. That was a great run. Brig Gold, thanks for the Prime sub in the 11 months. Thank you, thank you. Uh, nice waffles. Oh my god, it's Coco. GG. Without even one dollar. Well, he had two, I guess. Without even two dollars, we were able to bring it home. Not bad. GG. Uh, they call me Strider with a 13 months. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, what? Has it been done? The Spire sleepeth. And so... Shall I? GG, a great run for number seven. Will the Helix streak finally break? Or will we get another one? And a dad joke for the crowd. Hmm. What I got today? Sneaky Emily, thanks, thanks for six months. And Yippie K Yay with the tier two in the eight months of support. Was feed better than impervious in the end? Well, we went from 75 max health to 121 max health, but 19 of that wasn't due to feed. So from 75 to 102, we got 27 max health, which was quite a bit. That helped a lot. That definitely helped a lot. Twitch chat, what is the Ironclad's favorite kind of cheese? Demon formage. That's what I got for you. So what's the streak actually at? We are at seven as of now. We are at seven. We're going to be going for eight in a few minutes. However, first it is break time for me, Twitch chat. Got to refill the legs, stretch the water. When I return, there'll be some more spire. BRB.